The first story I wanted to talk about is about a guy named Josh Bernstein. I don't know if you guys have heard of him before. He's not a pastor. He is a right-wing commentator, and he is off in la-la land with some of the shit he believes. He is way out there. So I wanted to introduce you to the guy and see what you guys think of him. Check out this first clip. This is from late September 2020. It is a description of how he feels about the election. Remember, this is before Biden actually won the election. Check it out. Everything, folks, is on the line. Everything. Now, I will end it with this. If God forbid they figure out how to steal this election, the only thing that's going to save this country is revolution. And trust me, it will happen. Uh, there's no question about it. And when it happens, we will have a new America. Yes, there will be blood spilled, unfortunately, but they're bringing it upon us. That's a little over the top, seems to me, right? The guy is not just talking about a, an, a Civil War II, as he put on his thumbnail here. He's endorsing it and saying, as much as I wouldn't like that, there will be blood spilled. It will happen. Just wait. We'll get to hear a few more examples of this guy actively calling for violence. So why am I talking about this guy? He had some things to say recently about the Voting Rights Act that were pretty concerning to me. Um, I wanted to take a look at that clip, which we will in a minute. But I do want to point out this guy is not a nobody. This guy was on Roku TV. He had his own Roku TV channel. He has a massive audience, a concerning sized audience. Roku TV, I believe, pulled him down recently. In the past, I don't know, year maybe? They took his channel down because he was actively endorsing and calling for violent action, which good for Roku. Glad they made that decision. That's good news. You know, he may have had his Patreon removed too. I don't remember, but he created his own website anyways, created a membership system where people can pay like a dollar and watch as many of his videos as they want, a dollar per month or something like that. So he's behind a paywall at this immediate moment. Last I checked, but he is still making it, still surviving, still making money from this whole thing. And it's extremely concerning. We have to address him as long as he's saying shit like this. Let's listen to the next video. This is August, mid-August 2021. It's his take on Afghanistan and the whole situation playing out there. If you're unaware, Biden decided to pull the troops out of Afghanistan, which is a plan that Trump had talked about doing for like a really fucking long time. Biden finally pulled the trigger, and I'm extremely glad that he decided to because I'm sick of burning through billions, trillions of dollars and people's lives over the past 20 years. I'm glad we're getting out of there. Check out his take on this. The Taliban has taken over Afghanistan because of the stolen election. Okay, wow. Uh, that's a pretty big logical leap there. I'm interested to figure out how he got there. It's just that clear. And if you voted for Biden or helped in any way, you're an enemy combatant of the United States. Boom. See, this is the same thing I was talking about earlier. Um, this good versus evil us versus them mentality. You are an enemy and deserve to be a target during this civil war thing that he's been talking about. This is dehumanizing, dangerous language that he's using here. It's extremely concerning that, he's, that he views things this way and that he has an audience who agrees with him and listens to it. You're my enemy for sure. And you're the enemy of millions of of supporters of President Trump, which means ultimately that you are responsible for what is happening in the United States of America. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to like hash this out here, figure out exactly how we got from A to B. Uh, let me listen to that last sentence one more time. Which means ultimately that you are responsible for what is happening in the United States of America. I'm sorry, I'm just not seeing the connection here. 
I, I'm trying to like make sense of this logically, take logical steps, and it's just not adding up. Once again, I'm, I'm not taking my own advice. I keep saying, don't try to apply reason and logic and rationality to people who don't have it. It's, it's a, a fruitless exercise. Let's keep listening. Which means, ultimately, that you are responsible for what is happening in the United States of America. Not I. Our hands are clean. Because we did the right thing. We voted for President Trump, who won the election. You are the ones that stole it from us. My God, how long can I keep my brow furrowed like this? This is literally like, this is very uncomfortable keeping it like this. Jesus Christ. I, I, I'm cringing on the inside listening to this. It's so hard to listen to. He is, God, just so embarrassing, man. Please, just don't do it. You are the ones that stole it from us, and we will never stop fighting we will never stop trying to overturn this election, even if it kills us. And that, that is what you folks don't understand on the left. That's what you don't understand in Washington. That's what you don't understand at the FBI, the CIA, and the Department of Injustice. The resolve of the American patriots. No, I get it, actually. I do. I get it. This guy is a full-blown extremist, a violent extremist, in fact, not unlike the Taliban in some ways. And we should all be very concerned about the fact that people like him exist with these ass-backwards viewpoints. And not only that, he's spreading it to a gigantic fucking audience. That should be concerning to us, too. But here we are. He's still going. There's another video came out mid-August 2021 once again. This is the one that I originally wanted to watch, I believe. So let's give this clip a watch and see what he had to say for himself. The communist scumbag, Senate Majority Leader Chucky Schumer, who I can only hope one day burns in hell for even being alive because of what an evil, sick, twisted bastard he is. See, this is where this kind of mindset takes you. This us versus them mentality. This is its logical end. This kind of extremism where you don't just dislike somebody. You don't just think they're a scumbag or, or hate the fact that they're in office or whatever. You hate them. You hate that person. And you want them dead. And you want them suffering and being tortured for their, the rest of eternity is what he's saying here. That's where this takes you. People wonder why I warn against an us versus them mentality or why I try not to insult people or call people names or any of that other shit anymore. It's because this kind of mindset is the end result. This is where it will take you if you let it. Let's keep listening. Because of what an evil, sick, twisted bastard he is, tried to pass, okay, the absolutely misnamed For the People's Act, which is really For the Democrat Party's Act. So the For the People Act is actually pretty good. I've been reading a little bit about it. it it's a voting rights act, basically. Let me, let me pull it up real quick, see if I can... Uh, it's also known as H.R. 1. It's a bill in the U.S. Congress to expand voting rights, exchange campaign finance laws to reduce the influence of money in politics, ban partisan gerrymandering, and create new ethics rules for federal office holders. I could understand his argument if what it was doing was limiting what the people were allowed to do, limiting the power of the voters. That's not what's happening. It is expanding the rights of the voters and limiting what corrupt things politicians are allowed to do, like gerrymandering. When I had a civics class in high school, they talked about gerrymandering in the most dystopian, fucked up, backwards way. Like, they referred to gerrymandering as, like, the kind of thing that you see taking place in third world countries. Like, this is uh, just a part of corruption. 
if you see gerrymandering, then there's probably corruption around. That's how they referred to it, surprisingly, in my West Virginia high school. But here we are, and we still have gerrymandering in the U.S. today. This Voting Rights Act for the People Act, a.k.a. H.R. 1, it would ban partisan gerrymandering. I think gerrymandering, like redrawing districts, would still be okay, but you couldn't do it on partisan divides or something like that. I'm not super sure. It would change campaign finance laws to reduce the influence of money in politics. How is that limiting what people are allowed to do with their vote? This guy, Josh Bernstein, is just desperately trying to twist things around to make it appear as though his side is the side being fucked over here. Ultimately, this bill is a good thing. Let's keep listening to him. The Democrat Parties Act, let's face it. And they tried to do it in the middle of the night. Now, this pile of hot steaming dog shit would have federalized our elections. Now, I, I can't speak to that one. I don't actually know what he means by federalizing. I don't know if that's even accurate anyway, so I'm just going to pass over that point. Let this be a warning and a message, okay, to the fraudulent presidency, to the FBI, to the CIA, to the Department of Justice, to every swinging Democrat in America, and anybody else that supports this fraudulent regime, including these scumbag rhino Republicans. Okay, I don't, uh, I, I guess I fall into that category because I am a quote-unquote swinging Democrat? I mean, I don't really identify with the the Democratic Party exactly. I'm not a huge fan. I think it's full of corruption and money and all that other shit. But it's absolutely preferable to the Evangelical Party. The party of Christianity, aka Republicans. Way better than that. Basically anything would be, almost, at this point. So, um, I suppose I kind of fall into that category to some degree. I, so he's giving me a message now. Let's listen. If you fall into this category or one of these categories, he's talking to you. Let's give him a listen. See what he says. If you take away our right to a free and fair election. Nobody's tried to do that. I'm just busting this up before you even get to it. You're changing the premise. That is not what H.R. 1, a.k.a. the For the People Act, was trying to do. It was simply trying to remove money from politics, ban partisan gerrymandering, and expand voting rights. That is it. And our God-given constitutional right to be able to vote in a free and fair election, there's going to be grave consequences. Do you understand me? That ain't no threat. That's a direct promise. There will be grave consequences. And those grave consequences are not going to be on our side. I can guarantee you that. Because there are a hell of a lot more of us than there are of you. And as Rand Paul said, you can't arrest us all. Well, guess what? You can't even kill us all either. And we are willing to do whatever is necessary to protect this nation. I'll leave it at that. That's fucking concerning. That is disturbing. And something else he said, we are not in the minority, we're the majority, I think. Because there are a hell of a lot more of us than there are of you. Yeah, that, that's the line I was looking for. Um, that's inaccurate. I don't, I don't believe so. The majority is made up of centrists, moderates, and people to the left on the political spectrum. The people who are hard right, like this guy is right here, they don't make up the majority. They are loud and obnoxious and do their absolute best to give you the impression that they are the majority, but they're not. That's why Biden won, ultimately, because people like this guy right here are in the minority. Of course, he seems to be under the impression that Trump won. I wonder how many votes he believes Trump got. I mean, depending on how extreme you are, that number can vary a lot. Trump actually got 74 million votes. Okay, 74 million. And Biden got 81.3 million, basically. That only adds up to a total of, what, 150 million, roughly, somewhere in that vicinity? That's how many active voters there were in the U.S., roughly 150 million. So every vote that you give to Trump, you have to take from Biden. If you believe Trump got 120 million votes, again, people out there believe this shit. Then you believe Biden got 30 million. This is off the wall 
batshit crazy. There are people out there who genuinely believe Trump won all 50 states, including California, except for one, except for one state. I haven't seen anybody specify which state he lost. I guess they wanted to give Biden just one state at least to make it look like they're reasonable. These people are unhinged from reality. Not only are they unhinged from reality, completely out of touch, they're violent. We should be concerned about people like this guy.